Welcome to hour number two, the morning after live right here on Sports Grid, all across the Spiz Grizz Network and Sirius XM Channel 159. That is the home for Sports Grid Radio on Sirius XM. I am Ben Stevens, and I have a huge smile on my face as we start hour number two. Why, you may ask, because I get emotional every time I see Tiger Woods on a golf course, and he just teed off on hole number one at the home of golf, the old course at St. Andrews for the 150th playing of the Open Championship. A striped show on number one, an old school classic Tiger Stinger right down the pipe of the fairway. He'll have an approach into the first green and hopefully a birdie look to begin his play at the Open Championship. And that's how we start our number two because when there's action on the golf course, not only do we look at the live leaderboard, but we look at the live odds board on the FanDuel Sportsbook as well. We'll discuss what Tiger's odds were entering the 2022 Open Championship in just a moment. But another live look at the leaderboard as of right now. Cameron Young, the 25-year-old PGA Tour rookie, is the leader in the clubhouse. An opening round 64, par 72 at St. Andrews. He is the leader at 8 under par. Another Cameron, that being Cam Smith from Australia, 67 in his first round. He's five under. Rory McIlroy is still on the course. He is five under as well, tied for the second best odds. So let's take a look at what the live odds look like on the FanDuel Sportsbook at this moment. Constantly changing here in this opening round of the 2022 Open Championship. Rory McIlroy, the betting favorite pre-tournament at a price of 10 to 1, is still that live favorite at plus 470 if we have those odds to display here on the morning after. 10 to 1 on Rory. Now half of that taken off. He's plus 470. These are the live odds at the moment. Might look a little bit different than what you're seeing on the screen as it's changing in real time with these golfers on the course at St. Andrews in the opening round of the Open. Cam Smith in second right now, also at five under. His day is done for his first round. Eight to one, the second best price. Cameron Young, the first round leader at the moment. Ten to one alongside the number one golfer in the world, Scotty Scheffler on the course as well in his opening round at 10 to one. Xander Shoffley has been incredibly hot. He is 10 to one. That $4 of movement from his pre-tournament price at 14. To one. So as we mentioned, Tiger Woods out on the course, just his first tee ball, walking up the first fairway at St. Andrews. As Tiger has described it, this feels historic. Something in the cosmic energy at being at the home of golf, where they have played golf on this Lynx course since the 1300s, yet the 14th century at St. Andrews. Tiger wanted to be here for this major championship, the fourth and final of the year. He has had it circled on his calendar for quite some time. And here were the pre-tournament odds on Tiger Woods. Not Ryan Williams, Tiger Woods here. To make the cut, Tiger was minus 134. We showed you that number yesterday when Cam Rogers was on the show. It was minus 156, got close to $2, and then came back a little bit in the marketplace, ending around minus 134 for Tiger to see the weekend. To finish within the top 30, plus 185 and to win the open outright relatively long numbers at 65 to one playing alongside Tiger Woods in this opening grouping at the open championship the U.S. Open champion Matthew Fitzpatrick he is 18 to one before the tournament got underway and Max Homa who called it a childhood dream to play alongside his childhood idol in Tiger Woods he was 45 to one before the tournament got underway a welcome to our sports grid radio audience here the second hour of the morning after live on the grid sirius xm channel 159 the home for sports grid radio on sirius xm and all of our terrestrial radio affiliates now in the mix as well i am ben stevens the 150th open championship at the home of golf the old course at st andrews now underway in the opening round and tiger woods now underway in his first round at the Open as well. Walking up the first fairway, we'll have an approach shot into the first green, hopefully setting up a birdie look to start things off at St. Andrews. Again, as we mentioned, Max Homa, Matthew Fitzpatrick, Tigers playing partners for these first two days at the Open Championship. Matthew Fitzpatrick within the top five best odds entering the tournament, or at least in the top 10, the U.S. Open champion just a month ago, 18-1 to for Fitzpatrick before the tournament got started. And Max Homa, 
45 to 1, grew up in Southern California, idolizing Tiger Woods, called this an absolute dream, pure insanity, that he was playing with Tiger Woods for the first two days of the 150th Open Championship. We'll update this odds board and what Tiger Woods does in his first round of the Open throughout our number two of this program. But we have a ton coming your way in our number two. I say program all the time because I'm a huge college football fan. And the college football season in 2022 is unofficially getting underway. Big 12 Media Day starting in Arlington, Texas yesterday at the home of the Dallas Cowboys. Jerry's World, the second day of Big 12 Media Days is today. We'll look at the odds for the Big 12 coming up. And we'll go to the NBA rumor mill in these summer months. It seems like it's picking up a little steam. FanDuel's Brian Fonseca will join us at 1025 to recap all the rumors. And if there's smoke, maybe there's fire. Donovan Mitchell may be making his way to New York City. We'll have to wait and see. And to end out things at 1040, Major League Baseball awards the first half of the Major League Baseball season with our MLB insider, Craig Mitch. Come back and join us here on the morning after on Sports. Fantasy Sports Today. And then Garrett Cole will be the payup price here at $10,500. Washington in particular, David, 1-9 in their last 10. Worst team in baseball by far. Uh, But pretty decent matchup tonight at home. Yeah, they stink. But Josiah Gray does not stink. Now, uh, he has definitely had some troubles with run prevention this season. He's given up, you know, six earned runs a couple times, seven earned runs a couple times. But even... The Sports Grid Network. You might be the next Daily Fantasy Millionaire. No matter what you watch or where you play, learn from the world's best DFS players. Lineup building tools, expert projections, and advanced stats change the way you play the game. Dominate the competition. DailyRoto.com, the player's choice. The early line. Let's factor this in here. You take a look at DK Metcalf. He's a pure wide receiver on a football team that we expect to win like five or six games. So you know what that means, Kevin? Probably going to be down a lot in the second half and particularly in the fourth quarter where you enter into the fourth quarter with 55 yards receiving. You leave that game with a buck 25. Another team doesn't care because they won by two touchdowns. But you got your filler yards at the in the end of the game. And only on Sports Grid. Your heart's racing. The clock's running out. It all comes down to this. We're talking pregame. 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 Get locked in with game time decisions. Your hosts, Gabe Marinci and Cam Stewart, will get you ready for game time. Everything you need to know before a game goes off the board with the best lips to back it up. Make your best bet with live odds updates, late breaking news, up to the minute injury reports, and real time analytics from inside the sports books. All the odds, all the action from sports wagering insiders and industry pros like Donnie Wrightside, Gam Lou, Cousin Sal, the pro football doc, Dr. David Chow, and more. Get the winning edge every weekday afternoon from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 3 to 4 Pacific. It's game time decisions only on Sports Grid. The Pat McAfee Show. What did you think of the young wide receiver? What did you think of Watson? What did you think of Sammy? What do you think about uh, going into the season? Any thoughts on what you're going to have to focus on or anything like that? Definitely looked apart. All three of them. All three of the guys we drafted all, uh, you know, have, have physical gifts. Obviously, the top two picks are all uh, bigger. Um, Dobbs and Watson, but uh, but the seventh round pick got a lot of stuff to him. The Sports Network.
The college football season feels like it's unofficially beginning this week as Big 12 Media Days roll on for a second straight day right outside Dallas, Texas at Jerry's World as we get underway. It's talking season. Soon it becomes fall camp. And soon we get ready for the 2022 college football campaign. Less than seven Saturdays from now, we'll get going. Week zero, Saturday, August 27th. Welcome back to the morning after, live right here on a Thursday. Let's recap what happened at day number one of Big 12 Media Days and what the odds have to say about the Big 12 Conference. Throughout Media Days, in the coming days and weeks, Big 12, ACC, SEC is next week. Big 10 on the horizon in Chicago as well. With all that we have seen in the ever-evolving landscape of college sports and specifically college football this summer and really the last year or so, there will be tons of quotes about name, image, and likeness, the transfer portal, and of course, conference realignment in all of college athletics. And new Big 12 commissioner, Brett Yormark, made his debut in front of the cameras and microphones Yesterday, his introductory press conference as he takes over as the commish of the Big 12 starting on August 1st. And Brett Yormark saying yesterday, quote, one thing is for sure. The Big 12 is open for business. We will leave no stone unturned to drive value for the conference. Of course, because the Big 12 in response to the Big 10 adding both USC and UCLA for the 2024 season. With Texas and Oklahoma, the flagship programs of the Big 12 Conference set to join the SEC in 2025, the Big 12 made some headlines a couple of weeks ago in their response to all the conference realignment that we have seen. It was rumored, and nothing has been official as of yet, the Big 12 was in aggressive conversations with six schools out of the Pac-12 to join their conference in future years. Oregon, Arizona, Utah, Colorado, and Washington as well. Add in Arizona State. Those are all of the six schools. And the Big 12 has already worked in response to Texas and OU leaving the conference for 2025. They have added Cincinnati, Houston, UCF, and BYU starting next summer, July 1st, 2023. Those four schools will join the conference. Even Oklahoma State's Mike Gundy kind of joked yesterday, but within every joke, there is some truth and some true feelings that should Oklahoma and Texas even be at Big 12 Media Days if they're just going to go to the Southeastern Conference in 2025, all part of the changing landscape as we know it in college football, where money and TV revenue drives the bus and college football drives the bus in terms of big revenue sports at the college level level so that's the future we'll hear a ton about conference realignment and all that we will see all of the changes and the seismic shifts we have in store for the future of college football but none of that goes into effect just yet as of 2022 so we'll have that big picture perspective and those lofty conversations mixed in with the idea of just getting ready on paper game planning x's and o's depth charts for the 2022 college football campaign and as we look at the odds For the 2022 Big 12 Championship, Oklahoma is the betting favorite as of right now. Plus 200, 50 cents ahead of Texas, plus 250, the second best odds on the board. Those two bitter rivals set to join the SEC in a couple of years, but still the shortest prices on the board to win the Big 12 Championship. Right behind them, Oklahoma State and Baylor at six to one but a three and a half dollar drop off from where ut is to where oklahoma state and baylor find themselves i highlight those two teams and the cowboys and the bears because of course it was those two sides playing in the big 12 championship last year in 2021 where oklahoma state was mere inches away from not only a conference championship but a potential berth in the college football playoff now it makes sense to have the sooners booked as the favorites to win the Big 12 Conference. We have seen the Big 12 Championship game with the two best teams from this conference, no divisions in the Big 12. The two best win percentage from this conference represent the league in that conference title game. We have seen this iteration of that Big 12 title format five years now. The first four years of it, Oklahoma played in the game and Oklahoma won the championship four consecutive years from 2017 until 2020. It was only last year that the Sooners did not play in the title game, and it was Oklahoma State and Baylor. 
It's interesting to see Texas with the second best odds because it's the narrative, the public perception of the Longhorns at all times. When will Texas be back? It's a rather simple question from a language perspective, but it has many complex and complicated answers. So what will it take for Texas to be back? We discussed this slightly yesterday in correlating team success to individual success for the historic quarterback entering this year for the Longhorns in Quinn Ewers. Historic from a perspective of a high school recruit. Three perfect quarterback ratings in the history of 24-7 sports since the turn of the millennium in the year 2000. Vince Young, Arch Manning on the horizon in 2023, and Quinn Ewers, the slated starter for Texas this upcoming year. All most likely playing in the burnt orange of the Texas Longhorns. And as we look at the odds for Texas in 2022, as you can see there, it's a win total for Texas at eight and a half, the over a slight bit of juice. Texas has only gone over this regular season win total of eight and a half once in the last nine seasons. It was in 2019 when they won nine regular season games. And they have the second best odds to win the Big 12 at plus 250 and a plus 160 number to win double digit games to win 10 or more games in 2022. So which of these prices, which of these numbers will truly dictate that Texas is back and the horns stay up and do not remain down in 2022. Will it be going over eight and a half wins? Certainly that has to be the expectation to take anybody seriously if they ask the question, is Texas back? But I believe it has to be the plus 160 number of 10 plus wins. Again, with a historic level quarterback at the helm of Steve Sarkeesian's offense now, in Quinn Ewers, the 17th best scoring offense for Texas in 2021. The defense will need to be a ton better. The 20th worst rushing defense a season ago, ranking in the bottom 40 in both scoring defense and total defense last season. But what about some of the other contenders within the Big 12 Conference? What if we go to the state of the programs? Kansas State and Iowa State, very similar numbers right now in the Big 12. Both the Cyclones and the Wildcats booked with a win total of six and a half. There is some optimism in the Little Apple. Manhattan, Kansas, as it is known, over that six and a half win total, juiced in a heavy way at minus 145, over juiced at minus 135 for Iowa State as well. And not just similar win totals, but both booked at 18 to one, tied for the sixth best odds out of 10 teams in that Big 12 championship odds board as of right now, Iowa State won nine games for the first time in program history back in 2020. There is some optimism, but Iowa State losing tons of returning talent and production from a season ago. Brock Purdy, the quarterback, no longer there. Charlie Kohler, one of the stud tight ends in all of college football a season ago, no longer there. And Brees Hall, the outstanding running back, now plays for the New York Jets. So what will that optimism look like for K-State and Iowa State in 2022? Adrian Martinez, the grad transfer from Nebraska, slated to be the starting quarterback for the Wildcats. So we take everything in the Big 12 right now and look at the biggest picture perspective, national championship odds in college football. Because as we scroll through this odds board, you'll see Oklahoma, the seventh best price at 50 to one. You'll see Texas there at 80 to one as well. No Big 12 teams qualifying for the college football playoff a season ago. But Oklahoma has made the CFP four of the last or four of the eight total seasons we have had the college football playoff as the format to decide a national champion will the big 12 conference winner qualify for the college football playoff in 2022 it's a conversation we'll have all year long the nba rumor mill with brian fonseca next Your heart's racing. The clock's running out. It all comes down to this. We're talking pregame. 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 Get locked in with game time decisions. Your hosts, Gabe Marinci and Cam Stewart, will get you ready for game time. 
Everything you need to know before a game goes off the board with the best lips to back it up. Make your best bet with live odds updates, late breaking news, up to the minute injury reports, and real time analytics from inside the sports books. All the odds, all the action from sports wagering insiders and industry pros like Donnie Wrightside, Cam Lou, Cousin Sal, the pro football doc, Dr. David Chow, and more. Get the winning edge every weekday afternoon from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 3 to 4 Pacific. It's game time decisions. Only on Sports Grid. The morning after. What stood out to you most about game number one of this ginormous July series between Atlanta and New York? How good both of these teams are. I, I mean, but you highlighted if the Mets are doing what the Mets were built to do, which was you know, have Scherzer and have DeGrom and have those guys shoving and kick it right to the bullpen and one of the best closers in the game. I mean, you're looking at Edwin Diaz striking out more than half of the batters he's facing right now. It is outrageous. The Sports Grid Network. Fantasy Sports Today. Was last year Pete Gibson? Like, is that is this basically going to be who he is? Or do you think that there's another gear? Well, I mean, I actually think this rookie season was much more Pete Gibson because they were using him as a pass catcher that season. Uh, he had 44 targets in 10 games as a rookie, had 52 targets in 16 games last year, did miss the one game with injury. The Sports Grid Network. Pharrell, coast to coast. To roll with a guy like Xander Sabi that's as hot as he is. I think that you have to have a small piece of him in some aspect because history says at this tournament that guys that come in playing very well whether it's a win in in the five or six weeks coming in or a bunch of top tens in the five or six weeks coming in they usually perform very well right uh, i think that you have to have a small piece the sports grid network the early line mahomes has one of them checks in at two tom has one of them he checks in at four and then there's lamar jackson not inside the top 10. Sometimes I wonder if I pulled up recent NFL trivia, would people just fall all over themselves trying to remember that an MVP award was won by Lamar Jackson? Execs and coaches and maybe even players, it seems, around the league not showing respect to Lamar Jackson. Only on SportsGrid. Summer in the NBA, you never know what you're going to get. Are there actual substantiated rumors? Is it just speculation? All the off-season drama in the association, it's almost as fun as the actual games themselves. Welcome back to the morning after. And if we're talking the NBA rumor mill, that only means one thing. FanDuel's Brian Fonseca is here for the second straight week on a Thursday. And Fonseca, last week, we had a similar conversation surrounding Kevin Durant and the trade request from the Brooklyn Nets and what's going on with Kyrie Irving and last week you said you're a little bit fed up you just want to see things happen if they're actually going to happen and we haven't really seen anything happen in the last week what's going on my man same ish different day you know <laughs> basically where we're at at this point yep. uh now we have updated rumors though Ben Donovan Mitchell's available updated. for creatives as if as if he wasn't going to be available for trade, given that they traded Rudy Gobert. It's like, hey, uh, Danny Ainge, I don't think is interested in just middling around the Easter Conference. I think he actually is interested in either bottoming out totally and perhaps getting a shot at Victor Wembayama. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that right, but I'm going to have to because he's going to be did. really good. Uh, and then yep. Scoot Henderson uh, at the top of next year's draft. Like, He's going to be interested in accumulating picks and probably – I, I don't want to say tanking, but you know, you know. You can like, say it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You like, can say it. Like, like, listen, tampering is a thing of the past. <laughs> tankering being a weird thing is a thing of the past. Like, none of that is taboo anymore in the NBA. It just happens. We know it's happening, and it's continuing to happen. And yes, as Fonseca mentioned, there is a feeling around the NBA right now that Donovan Mitchell is actively being involved 
in trade talks and that Utah is listening to that interest even if they say as of right now they have no intent of trading away the spider. But the Athletics' Tony Jones, who covers the Utah Jazz, did say a couple of days ago that a team to pay attention to, the New York Knicks, who would offer up a ton in hopes of requiring Donovan Mitchell. So Fonseca, I ask you, how realistic is it that you think the Knicks can trade for Donovan Mitchell? It's very realistic. Now, the thing is, they have some competition there, we know, in Miami. Um, and those are going to be, I think it's going to be in a race between the Knicks and the Heat as to who gets Donovan Mitchell eventually. And what I'm looking at here is, for Utah, it sort of depends on what they value. Ian Begley has reported that there is no interest in including R.J. Barrett in a trade from the Knicks' perspective. To me, I think that's smart. I think that's very responsible. I want Donovan Mitchell. I want R.J. Barrett to be there. And obviously, you have Jalen Brunson. Uh, The guy you would want to trade is Julius Randle, but I'm not sure if uh, Utah has any interest in that. But to have R.J. Barrett not be on the table can also hurt them because Tyler Hero is absolutely on the table if you're the Miami Heat. And Mm. Danny Ainge, there's a report around there. Um, I think it was from NBC Sports, and I'm forgetting the guy's name who wrote it, but he did a good job where he noted – Uh, I think this was during the Eastern Conference Finals in 2020 when the Heat played the Celtics in the bubble. And he said that the Celtics collectively moaned when Tyler Hero was drafted right before their pick in 2019. Danny Ainge wanted him. And the Heat want him now. I mean, the Heat have him now. And the Celtics may, I mean, uh, Danny Ainge may still want him in Utah. And let's be honest, uh, for joking purposes, Tyler Hero in Utah, ton of marketability sense. You know what I mean? Just makes it ton of sense if we want to go down Why? that route right why <laughs> you know duncan Is robinson tyler hero you know what i mean <laughs> they might send an omer yurts of it like it's perfect you know they can have fun at sundance and whatever else happens yeah. in utah good basketball but- iq gym rats those guys yeah i know what you're <laughs> shooters um but like yeah, that's sort of shooters. where we're at but but in all seriousness it's like if you're going to have tyler hero and the Knicks aren't going to throw an R.J. Barrett, then it's like, is Miami's trade package better? But then you have to consider yep. the draft picks, and this is where the Knicks have the upper hand. Because the Heat, regardless of where they are, they're always going to try and be competitive. If they bottom out for a year, it'll only be for a year, and then they'll get right back to trying to win games. The Knicks are the Knicks, so you feel good about taking their draft picks if you're Danny Ainge. But how much do you yep. value Tyler, uh, how much do you value Tyler Hero? becomes interesting so it's not even a Tyler Hero RJ Barrett conversation because RJ doesn't seem to be on the table and I think that if Danny Ainge wants the player in Tyler Hero and whatever else that comes with that other players picks maybe that's the direction they go but I do think the Knicks have a realistic chance even without RJ Barrett but it's gonna take a lot of draft picks and we show those jazz odds for the upcoming 2022-23 NBA season 65 to 1 to win the Western Conference that market has worked against them in the last 24 hours maybe giving some substantiation to these rumors it's 110 to 1 now for Utah to win the West a team that entered last year with the fourth best odds a perennial playoff team although they didn't do much in the postseason the last five years or so out in the Western Conference so again Utah big sellers at this point in the NBA offseason. Another vital important piece throughout the NBA summer will be DeAndre Ayton because when Kevin Durant requested his trade, his preferred destination was Phoenix. DeAndre Ayton was thought to be a part of that trade package Brooklyn could get back in a sign-in trade. Now it's all building up steam that DeAndre Ayton very, very soon is going to be an Indiana Pacer. He has already met with the Pacers according to reports, yet no deal has been offered as of yet and DeAndre has not left Phoenix for Indianapolis at this time so Fonseca again rumors reports speculation but nothing actually happening when do you believe DeAndre Ayton might actually become an Indiana Pacer I honestly thought this would happen already the NBA has just been one giant game of chicken for the last week and a half or so where everybody's just waiting for somebody else to make the first move and reporters are just sort of reporters and non-reporters i should say are funneling things uh to the to the consuming public just about 
rumors that are not happening and things that may or may not happen. And it's like, you know, it's kind of like Marlo said on the wire, do it or don't, I have some place to be. It's kind of where I'm at with the NBA <laughs> offseason. Um, and with the Indiana Pacers in particular, it's like, are you going to do this offer sheet or not? And that sort of tells me that they're waiting to see, like maybe Phoenix is actually cooperating with the Nets and putting together some sort of sign and trade or three team deal, whatever the case may be. Maybe that's what it is. And the Aiton thing, instead of just becoming an offer sheet, which then restricts it, because remember, if they sign him to yep. the offer sheet, then the Pacers are going to be able to get him. Or if Phoenix is going to match the offer sheet and just keep him, they can't trade him. You know what I mean? You can't do a sign and trade at that yep. point because he will have signed the offer sheet. But if you're able to tell Indiana, like, hold, 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 hold on, we're working on this trade with Kevin Durant. Let's do the offer sheet. I mean, let's not do the offer sheet. Let's actually sign him. We're going to send him to you in a three-team deal because the Nets reportedly don't want DeAndre Ayton, like whatever. Like they're working it. Maybe they're still working it out in that way. But somebody do something. Like that's, just, yeah. you know, like that's where I'm at. Like somebody do something. I don't care if Kevin Durant winds up with the Miami Heat, the Phoenix Suns, the Orlando Magic, the New York Liberty, the Harlem Globetrotters, <laughs> uh, FC Barcelona, I don't care, like, you know, Cangrejeros de Santurce in, in Puerto Rico, I don't care. You know what of I course. mean? Send him yeah. somewhere. Like, just do it at this point. But, like, I just want to get this part of it over with. But the fact that Aiton hasn't done the offer sheet with Indiana yet tells me that maybe there's a chance that something around Durant is being worked on because I feel right. like once the big Durant shoe falls or Donovan Mitchell – we'll start to see some other things work off of that. And DeAndre Ayton is just one piece of the entire Kevin Durant trade request saga. Kyrie Irving is another portion of that. And according to more reports, Kyrie is content and has every intention on playing with the Brooklyn Nets next season with or without Kevin Durant. Brian, do you actually believe that Kyrie Irving will play next year in the NBA as a Brooklyn Net? <laughs> I, don't, I have no idea what he's going to do. Like, <laughs> yeah. That's fair. I have no idea what he's going to do. And shout out to Ness, shout out to Ness Daily. I used to write there uh, way back in the day. Yep. Uh, not way back in the shout day, not that old. Um, but like, look, I, I have no, no idea what Kyrie is going to do. I do believe that there is a chance though, Ben, that Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving do just go back to Brooklyn because one, wow. the Durant asking price is way too high. And I think that the rest of the league, like maybe there was an overcorrection. The Rudy Gobert thing happened and it just distorted everything that we know about trades at this point. And it's like, wait, he went for that much. So Durant has to go for that much. And it's like Minnesota's only made the playoffs a handful of times in their history and only once or twice without Kevin Garnett. So like they're desperate, a special kind of desperate to just be going to the second round at the very least. That's different. Yeah. And with Durant, it's like I have reservations about trading so much for him, given, you know, 34, year 16, post Achilles, et cetera, et cetera, injuries the last couple of years. So I think for me, there is a chance that both of those guys just wind up in Brooklyn because of the asking price. But I do think that there's real smoke to the Lakers one and Kyrie Irving. Um, it's just a matter of like, again, do it or don't at this point. But the right. Nets also seem to want to do, handle the Durant thing first. So we'll see. And reflected in the market. Brooklyn now 14 to 1, the fifth best odds. After the Kyrie, or KD, KD, KD trade request, they moved back to 17 to 1, now up in the marketplace. The Lakers plus 650, the fourth best odds in the Western Conference. So we'll see. The odds move, the rumors continue to churn, and nothing has actually happened as of yet. When it does, we'll let you know, as will FanDuel's Brian Fonseca. Brian, thank you as always for your time. Absolutely. You are the best. We'll see. Hopefully next week a rumor actually becomes a deal. Major League Baseball, first half honors, up next on The Grid. Your heart's racing. The clock's running out. It all comes down to this. We're talking pregame. 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 Get locked in with game time decisions. 
Your hosts, Gabe Marinci and Cam Stewart, will get you ready for game time. Everything you need to know before a game goes off the board with the best lips to back it up. Make your best bet with live odds updates, late breaking news, up to the minute injury reports, and real time analytics from inside the sports books. All the odds, all the action from sports wagering insiders and industry pros like Donnie Wrightside, Cam Lou, Cousin Sal, the pro football doc, Dr. David Chow, and more. Get the winning edge every weekday afternoon from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 3 to 4 Pacific. It's game time decisions only on Sports Grid. The morning after. What stood out to you most about game number one of this ginormous July series between Atlanta and New York? How good both of these teams are. I, I mean, but you highlighted if the Mets are doing what the Mets were built to do, which was you know have Scherzer and have Degrom and have those guys shoving and kick it right to the bullpen and one of the best closers in the game. I mean. You're looking at Edwin Diaz striking out more than half of the batters he's facing right now. It is outrageous. The Sports Grid Network. Fantasy Sports Today. Was last year Pete Gibson? Like, is that is this basically going to be who he is? Or do you think that there's another gear? Well, I mean, I actually think this rookie season was much more Pete Gibson because they were using him as a pass catcher that season. Uh, he had 44 targets in 10 games as a rookie, had 52 targets in 16 games last year, did miss the one game with injury. The Sports Grid Network. Pharrell, coast to coast. To roll with a guy like Xander Chauvin that's as hot as he is. I think that you have to have a small piece of him in some aspect because history says at this tournament that guys that come in playing very well whether it's a win in in the five or six weeks coming in or a bunch of top tens in the five or six weeks coming in they usually perform very well right uh, i think that you have to have a small piece the sports grid network the early line mahomes has one of them checks in at two tom has one of them he checks in at four and then there's lamar jackson not inside the top 10. Sometimes I wonder if I pulled up recent NFL trivia, would people just fall all over themselves trying to remember that an MVP award was won by Lamar Jackson? Execs and coaches and maybe even players, it seems, around the league not showing respect to Lamar Jackson. Only on SportsGrid. First half honors, if you will, in Major League Baseball. Only four days left of the official first half before the All-Star break takes place on Sunday night. So joining us here on the morning after right now, our Major League Baseball insider on Sports Grid, the host of Fantasy Sports Today coming up in just about 20 minutes and the host of Newswire each and every weekday at 2 p.m. Eastern. Craig Mish joins us now on the morning after to give out some awards, some honors, some discussion surrounding the first half of this Major League Baseball campaign. Craig, thank you so much for joining us on this Thursday. Of course, Ben. Hope you're well. Good to see you again. What's going on? I'm doing very, very well. Craig Mish will be heading out to Los Angeles in just a couple of days for that All-Star game on Tuesday night at Dodger Stadium, the break following that. So, Craig, here in the first half of the Major League Baseball season, already past the official midway point of the 162-game schedule. Most teams playing anywhere from 87 to 89 games at this point we'll look at the world series odds to begin because right now the yankees and the dodgers tied to the same number co-favorites at plus 400 the astros behind them by a buck at plus 500 so craig the yankees dodgers astros maybe another team you would like to include in this conversation who has been the best team in all of the bigs in the first half of the major league baseball season yeah, I, mean, I think it's fair to say that the Yankees have been the best team when, you know, start to finish. They've been dominant for sure. I know they've had some hiccups here recently with their bullpen, uh, but inevitably they've been the best team and you know, you're just almost never going to get valued odds on the Yankees. It doesn't happen. So uh, what, what really intrigues me is still uh, is still the Astros, Ben. You know, like that to me mm. is the team that 
you know, doesn't get really talked about enough. You'll go through your LAs and New Yorks. And I, and look, I think FanDuel has really adjusted a lot of the Astros odds to reflect the fact that they're going to yeah. win the division, uh, you know, have a really good shot to win the pennant. And then obviously anything can happen in the World Series, let's be honest. But uh, it's going to be really compelling to me to see what happens at the trade deadline. I think that it could be make or break for some teams for sure. And I don't think that Houston is afraid to make that big deal. So while everyone's talking about the Mets adding players, the Yankees adding players, we know the Dodgers will add some pieces. I'm still going to stick with the Astros to this point. Really amazing, Ben, when you think about that whole cheating scandal that, uh, you know, yep. people said that's the reason why they won the World Series. I mean, they're sort of proving otherwise now, I think. I think they are. And even with some of their bigger names, like Carlos Correa going to other destinations, the Astros are still there. The second best record in all of MLB. Craig, as you scroll through that list a little bit for the World Series odds, are there any teams deeper down that might have some value you expect to make a run in the second half of the season? Yeah, I, I think that the Cardinals are another one of those teams that you rarely see them go out, Ben, in the off season and get a primary free agent for whatever reason they have a hard time luring guys to st louis so what they generally do is make trades and then let the players sort of see how it is to be part of the organization and then inevitably mm -hmm. extend them like people say well you know what about uh you know nolan arenado and what about paul goldschmidt like their two best players well they got those guys via trades too ben so um you know they're probably a hitter and a pitcher short but I still think that that is a team that, you know, with the right scenario could make a deep run. Uh, you know, Milwaukee really never makes huge moves at the deadline. So, you know, that's another team that I would say to keep an eye on because whoever wins that division is going to be in a much better position. And then naturally, you know, outside of, you know, you said the long shots, 18-1 to 1 or 35-1. to 1, But obviously you got to consider yeah. the Braves at this point, too. You just don't know with them, too. I've been a lot of this is going to come down to the trade deadline. I mean, that, that's really that's going to yeah. shift the odds, I think, significantly. Even the betting favorites will make moves before the trade deadline at the end of the month of July. Craig, words I never thought I would say here on the morning after four days out from the All-Star break in Major League Baseball. The Baltimore Orioles are one game above 500 at 45 and 44 straight up. The O's have won 10 straight games and they sit just two games out of playoff contention in the American League. Craig, have the Baltimore Orioles been the biggest surprise of the first half of this Major League Baseball season? I think there's no question. Uh, Seattle winning 10 games in a row also shouldn't be ignored. They were sort of left for right. dead a couple of weeks ago, and now here they are, and, and Ben, they're in a playoff position. And I suppose when you look at Seattle, you could have said, well, you know, they added Robbie Ray, and they got some nice, P, you know, Ty France. They have some good players. Uh, maybe we shouldn't be as surprised with them. But I really don't think that the Orioles thought that they would be in a position to compete for the postseason this year. So, uh, you know, really interesting to see some of their pitchers starting to come along. Their farm yeah. system is loaded, so they're in a great position going into 2023. I don't know how aggressive they're going to be at the deadline, but sometimes these wins yeah. sort of force the hand of the general manager and at this point it's mike elias who has come in and done an unbelievable job with the baltimore orioles and yeah they've lost a lot of games but it seems like they've hit on a lot of their draft picks too uh, adley rutschman since he has come up he's been fantastic so uh, I, I don't know that we're what we're seeing is real ben in the end my guess is baltimore still finishes under 500 but what a great story it's been for sure it is going to be so incredibly compelling to see what baltimore does ahead of the trade deadline once thought to be maybe the biggest sellers in all of MLB, we'll see what they do here moving forward. Craig, we've seen a change also at the top of the board for the American League MVP. Following another outstanding start on the bump, Shohei Otani is now the betting favorite once again for AL MVP at plus 115, ahead of Aaron Judge, who is now the second best price at plus 170. Craig, in your mind, who deserves to be the betting favorite for American League MVP? Yeah, there was a time on FanDuel very recently where you could still get more than two to one on Otani, and and that's mm -hmm. done. It's over. I, I think what's happening is everyone is just starting to realize what he's doing is so special that not, not regardless of the result, but just sort of playing a little bit of how he is pitching on top of the kind of player that he is stealing bases and hitting. I mean, you really can't give the MVP award to anyone else as long as he's playing in Major League Baseball. You really can. And and, and I don't even care if his ERA was in the threes or the fours and, you know, only had 20 home runs. I, I just, what we're seeing is, is something that is, you know, arguably the greatest athlete in sports 
right now. Yeah. So as long as Otani is playing in the league and playing at a decent level, he should be the American League MVP. And uh, and it's crazy to think, Ben, that he's probably got a better shot to win the MVP than the Cy Young. Like, that's crazy. <laughs> I mean, it, I, I don't think not. he's going to win the Cy Young, but I think he's going to win the MVP. I mean, that's, that's pretty insane. Now tied for the third best odds to win the AL Cy Young at plus 850, but still trailing the favorite, who is Shane McClanahan of Tampa Bay at plus 210. And to Craig's point, the Angels are still 11 games below 500. But Shohei Otani, not only five great starts in a row where he's only given up one earned run in total in those five consecutive starts, he's won six straight starts. So when he's on the mound, it's the game that the Angels win. So when you speak valuable players, that would be Shohei Otani for the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. As we go to the National League MVP race right now, Paul Goldschmidt of the St. Louis Cardinals is the betting favorite. Craig, in your mind, in the second half of the season, who could maybe give Goldie a run for the NL MVP? Yeah, I, I still think Machado has to be in the equation. And, and it's going to be interesting when Tatis comes back because if Tatis gets hot, that sort of could cut into what Machado is doing. Um, you know, the other name that I really find fascinating, he's been really hot lately. And it seems like that initial snub of the All-Star game has kind of hit him a little bit. That's Freddie Freeman. You know, Freddie Freeman is 20-1. to 1 and playing on arguably the best team in the National League. And, Ben, I wonder as this goes on, and, and look, Freddie's had a good first half. He hasn't been an MVP first half, but, I mean, this is a guy that's won the MVP too. So I would not discount a huge second half from him. And if he's carrying the Dodgers at any point this season, yes, he's got the other guy, the other competition there in, on his own team. I think we just showed odds for two other players on the Dodgers there in the top ten. But Freeman is an interesting name, I think, to watch the rest of the way. I think it's a great point as well because the Dodgers are the favorites to win the National League. They were before the year got underway. They're co-favorites to win the World Series. They were the favorites in the preseason as well. But if they make good on those numbers, and Freddie Freeman is a huge component of that, his value in the MVP market is going to continue to get shorter and shorter. National League Cy Young now, Craig. First half award, of course, it would have to be Sandy Alcantara. The betting favorite, the odds-on favorite at minus 110. Do you believe Sandy is on a tier of his own in the race for the NL Cy Young Award? Yeah, I think that this is locked up. I, I think that provided that Sandy just goes out and does similar to what he's done in the first half. Now, I don't think you're going to see as many complete games and eight inning games from Sandy moving forward. I think they're going to have to protect him a little bit. I don't think that that will change anything. You know, Gonsolin's advanced numbers sort of show that he's you know, going to have some, I think, pushback here in the second half. So yeah. to me, three-player race, and I think the top three guys are the ones to consider. Maybe a little bit of on the outside of Max Fried, but he's had problems staying healthy in the past too. Uh, what's interesting is that because Burns won last year, you know that, that there's sort of always that MVP fatigue where they look to give it to someone else. I think whoever that other player would have been could have given Sandy a run for his money in the second half of the season. But given that it's Burns, and if it's close, yeah. I think Sandy's going to end up winning. So this is the one race, ironically, outside of maybe American League Rookie of the Year, uh, that I do think yep. is over. You know, Julio Rodriguez, I, I mean, he's got to be a lock to win the uh, Rookie of the Year at this point. In the four big races right now, American League, National League MVP, and the Cy Young in both leagues, there is only one number that has a minus money price next to it, and it is... Sandy Alcantara to win National League Cy Young Award. When we go to the American League Cy Young, we mentioned it, Shane McClanahan, the favorite at plus 210, a great start yesterday, his 10th win of the year, the best ERA now in Major League Baseball at 172 with the win yesterday against the Red Sox, 60 cents behind Justin Verlander, and there's Shohei Otani and Garrett Cole, tied for the third best price at plus 850. Craig, if you had to vote right now, who wins the American League Cy Young Award? It would be McClanahan, but there's really no uh, data that shows McClanahan as a 200-inning pitcher. So I'm curious how this will uh, work out the rest of the season. Uh, you know, clearly Verlander is right there. The one long shot that I would say that is definitely at least worth considering. They're a decent team, and he's got a lot of experience at going deep in the games is Shane Bieber. Bieber looks like he is coming on right mm. now. He just pitched a complete game. And uh, would not shock me at all to see him have an epic second half. So I know that his odds are really long at this point, but I, I think he right. finishes top three, top four at the end of the year. 
Shane Bieber right now 35 to 1 and as Craig mentioned just two days ago the first game of a doubleheader against the White Sox Bieber threw his first complete game since the 2019 season so yes Cleveland also in that race for the American League wild card three games back of that four and a half behind the Minnesota Twins Craig Mishu will be in Los Angeles for the Major League Baseball All-Star Game what is the number one thing you are looking forward to taking a part of in LA well, no doubt, it's uh, for me. It's always the home run derby. I don't. I can't. I'm trying to think. I think this is probably my fifth or sixth All Star game. I'm not really sure, but the environment at that thing is incredible, especially when it's close and you have two guys going at it back and forth, back to back. Uh, it's been a while since I've been in Los Angeles. It's honestly been mm-hmm. a while, Ben, since I've traveled anywhere. So uh, this is going to be fun. My whole family will be there. Uh, you know, through the All Star game next week, we're, we're actually leaving uh, tomorrow to take part in all the festivities. So. Uh, looking forward to it all it's just been a while since we've been on the road man i think that probably goes for a lot of people out there but us in particular yeah craig best wishes to you have a wonderful time in los angeles as the sun starts to set over chavez ravine for that major league baseball home run derby it is going to be incredible scenery craig mish catch him in just a couple of minutes on fantasy sports today live right here on sports but craig safe travels out to los angeles thank you ben see you next week Talk to you very, very soon. The Major League Baseball All-Star Game on Tuesday night. We finish with a best bet, a K-prop for the Major League Baseball slate on this Thursday. Up next. Take a look at Heinz Field changing its name over to Acrisure Stadium. Sounds terrible, doesn't it? You have to understand, it's about making money. Here, get ready. Are we not too far off of Lambeau Field being Toyota Stadium, Yankee Stadium being Ford Stadium, and Fenway Park being sponsored by Snickers? I don't know, but this environment is coming only on Sports Grid. Maurice Allen, 2015-2016 European Long Drive Tour Champion, 2017 World Number One. Me personally, I keep my game face on me all the time. Especially coming out of the bunker, leaving the range, or even leaving the course. What's your story? might be the next daily fantasy millionaire. No matter what you watch or where you play, learn from the world's best DFS players. Lineup building tools, expert projections, and advanced stats change the way you play the game. Dominate the competition. DailyRoto.com, the player's choice. Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. They play less games. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less Rogers games. And the morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the Today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell, coast to coast. That's where they win cups. Stanley Cups over there. Give me the game pass. time decision. Kind of bizarre when you consider it. Like the, everybody is out for the Warriors. In game live all like access. Mandy. I like Mandy against Bam. I think Mandy can win the game, take a four and a In half. game oh, live man. prime oh, yeah, time. The major, the PGA champion. In yes. game live overtime. All done before the final bet. Get the game. winning edge only on Sports Grid. The Pat McAfee Show. I was joking with uh, with a couple of my buddies um, on the squad, and I said, could be a long training camp for the offense. I like the way our defense is, is looking and playing, and, and just on paper, it, it looks like they're going to be pretty formidable. So it could be, could be some growing pains for the offense, which would be great for us. It would be nice to, uh, to t- take our lumps uh, from time to time. The Sports Grid Network. The 
morning after live on this Thursday on Sports Grid. About to come to a close in just a couple of minutes. Thank you for joining us on this Thursday live on Sirius XM channel 159. That's the home for Sports Grid Radio. All across the Sports Grid Network is where you've been watching as well. And I am Ben Stevens. Only four more days left of the official first half of this Major League Baseball season. When the games come to a close on Sunday afternoon and evening, we will officially hit the All-Star break. Monday, home run derby. Tuesday, All-Star game. Wednesday, Thursday, off. We're back in action on that Friday, just coming up in a little bit. So we're in the dog days of summer when it comes to Major League Baseball. And I'm scrolling the FanDuel Sportsbook right now. I'm looking across. They have a new compartment up there called Thurs K's. K props on a Thursday. Get it Thursday? Thurs K's? Yeah, we're going to have some fun with that before we say farewell and before we say goodbye. It's time for a Major League Baseball best bet, a K prop, in fact. It is time for Bye Bye Bye. The Angels can't stop striking out. They have the highest K rate against right handed pitching in all of Major League Baseball this year, striking out more than 30%. Of the time in the last two weeks that number continues to tick up to 33 percent in the last two weeks part of that reason probably because the last time the halos faced the astros and framer valdez who is starting today for houston in anaheim valdez had a season high 13 strikeouts he is facing the angels again today where his k prop is only six and a half and the over right now is even money plus 100 not just the 13 against the angels in his second to most recent start he has also gone over this number has valdez in three of his last five outings so on this thursday we go with a k prop over frame of valdez six and a half strikeouts against the angels in anaheim tonight also keep an eye on corbin burns his k prop at seven and a half over minus 150 just a little bit too much juice against the giants that'll do it for a thursday live right here on the morning after on sports grid we're back tomorrow at 9 a.m eastern time i'm ben stevens and we'll talk then.